Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. Today, I am joined by a friend, a fellow investor, and a millionaire. His name is Dustin Hogue. Dustin, welcome to the show, my friend. What's going on, everyone? Glad to be here. Man, we're happy to be here. I'm grateful to have you on the show. It's always nice yeah. to be able to network with you and you know learn from other individuals that have amassed... Uh, at least 1 million in wealth. So that's amazing. Yeah. Justin, do yeah. me a favor. If you don't mind, uh, tell the audience who you are, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it starts first and foremost. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a coach, and then I'm a real estate investor okay. for about 10 years. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Right to the point. Absolutely. What have you done primarily? And I know there's probably a couple things, you know, lots of things in some cases that you would, um, you know, attest to or put your hand on the fact that, you know, this has really helped me amass wealth. Oh, a hundred percent. that is real estate, investing in real estate and holding real estate. I think that's a big part there. It's okay. keeping it all to myself and holding it. Agreed. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. Dustin, again, thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, here we go. We got five questions for our guests outside of the two, you know, hello, welcome, who are you and, and what strategy have you used? So here we yeah. go. Number one. Let's go. <clears throat> what was your biggest financial mistake or setback and how did you recover from it? Oh, talk about hitting home because it's kind of currently. Okay. Um, okay. So two years ago, three, almost two and a half years ago, I guess, um, I bought a campground in Lesterville, Missouri. And, uh, you know, and, and I guess going into it, we weren't thinking that it was going to make tons of money. I didn't think it was going to lose as much money as it did though, either. Um, you know, so, and I mean, we were, we were running float trips. We were doing the whole works down there, had no clue what we were doing and did that for two seasons. And finally, like, we're done. We're not even going to open it. If we can't sell it. We're just, we're going to hold on to it. And, uh, but as of like the last week and a half, we finally have an under lease option to carry some of that burden but uh, easily the, the most costly investment I've ever made. I'll put it that way. So, and I, I love starting with this just because we can all learn, at least me, I, I can learn more from people's mistakes than I can from oh. their wins. So 100%. I think it throws a lot of people off whenever I ask this question first, but so if you don't mind, yeah. um, why, why was it a mistake or a setback? Like what was yeah. the, you know, you had, you already said you didn't think it was going to print money and that's fine. Right. You know, I don't think most of my investments are going to print money either. Um, but what was like, why, what's the lesson that we can take away from, from that? Yeah. So a couple of things, you know, I, I've bought a few businesses since then, and I've bought a few businesses before that. And I think if you're going to go in and buy businesses, really understand the business. And, you know, I don't even camp, so I didn't understand the business at all. <laughs> um, and it was one of those things that ego was probably there. Like, oh, I can do this. This is easy. Anybody can do this. And I believe that. And I also didn't realize the stress it was going to have. And it was 100% buying a job. And it was a hard job because everything breaks down there. Did you know school buses are not supposed to drive through a river? 
I story. did. <laughs> yeah, I, apparently I didn't. Um, and we did that like seven times on a Saturday. So things just broke all day, every day. And it's honestly, it's a little bit different life of my nice suburbia place that doesn't break. So sure. yeah. Yeah. Know the industry you're going to buy in. I think that's, that's the number one lesson there. That's a great lesson, man. Thank you. for. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Uh, good lesson for sure. I have been camping a few times. Side note. Uh, I'm not a huge camper. I like to upgrade my lifestyle when I'm yeah. in my house, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but I know there's a lot of people that just love it. So I'm sure there's, you guys had a lot of fun Absolutely. Um, as well as, you know, some nights where you probably wanted to pull your hair out. Right. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but I'm sure you guys, um, especially my wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun, but it was, it was just an interesting life down there. I mean, how far away know, is it from you, where you live? It's, it's it's two hours exactly. Okay. Um, and That's I was down drive. there every weekend. Yeah, and I was down there every weekend. Uh, and my stepdad, who's one of my full time contractors, was down there with me every weekend. And it's just like a hard life, but it was also a slower paced life. I yeah. mean, you know, pros and cons. Absolutely, but it was it was kind of a culture shock to my kids too. So I like them experiencing that, totally. like why doesn't that guy have a shirt on when he's driving around <laughs> town and why is he drinking a beer? And I'm like, well, right. you know, so I'm from a small town. So it kind of, it was, there was, there was a little bit of home to it for sure. Um, that was amazing. Awesome. Answer. Okay. <laughs> number two, can you yeah. share some specific strategies or tactics with the audience here that you have used to increase your income, your savings rate, as well as your wealth? I mean, those are a little different, of course, but you get the, you get the idea. What are the specific strategies and tactics? And you already kind of mentioned real estate, um, but is there anything specifically that you would, you know, want the audience to pick up? Like, okay, everyone knows real estate can make you money. What specifically? Right. So I would say there's going to be two things. A, you absolutely have to know your numbers in business. That is your scorecard. So there is not, and I'm not a sports guy by any means yet. There is not a player on the field, on the court, on whatever they're playing on that doesn't know the score at all times. As a business owner, as an acquisition person, as a CEO, whatever you want to call yourself, that is the number one thing. And I'm going to say second, hire a coach. I don't care what business you're in. I don't care any of that. Have a coach. Those are the two 100% strategies and tactics that have got me to where I am today and will continue to propel me forward. A hundred percent agree with that. And as a coach, I know you are too. Um, I give my students scorecards so they know their numbers. And it's easy to see the ones that are winning, that have a lot of points on the scorecard and the ones that yeah. aren't winning yet yeah. um, have yet to figure out that they need to get those, those pump those rookie numbers up, right? They got to get those numbers yeah. up. So yeah, so true. Um, I totally concur, agree. And hopefully the audience, you know, knows that already but if they don't guys listen to what dustin just said that it's so important you got to track what you're doing and even to kind of go one more layer deep on that you know everyone has goals i have goals you have goals all the listeners have goals but if you don't have a plan attached to the goal it's just a dream yeah. and a scorecard is the best way to implement a plan absolutely so i'm getting off into the weeds here but yeah. i can't agree more <laughs> Yeah, with what you're saying, man, I can't agree yeah. more. Okay, number three, did yep. you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? I'm not asking who. I'm asking how. Yeah. So great question. So uh, several. Yes, is the answer. Still do to this day the people who motivate me and things like that, and it's how they how they modeled themselves and how they modeled their business. That, that was a big thing to me. Um, it started with books. I won't be real honest. It started with 100% books. And I'm not afraid to say that, you know, his name, it was Gary Keller, because uh, I've been a real estate agent well before I was an investor. And Gary Keller wrote a lot of different books, obviously, but one of them that why we even started looking into holding real estate was the book Hold, H-O-L-D, that Gary Keller wrote. Um, that's what got us down the path. And then it became, hey, if that guy's doing it, I can do it. And then went into it from there and then hired the mentors and hired the coaches and just watched what they had. And, you know, standing on the foot are the shoulders of giants. I think it's the term that Tony Robbins uses. And that's, that's where we started from. I love it, man. Holding has been the main reason for a lot of my wealth too. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see in the background right there, I have a pink piggy bank. 
Yep. I use that piggy bank as an example with my students. Each one of my rentals is a piggy bank and it's a piggy bank that I can't really reach into and pull money out right away. It's, it's kind of yeah. locked up in a sense. I'm terrible at saving money, uh, but I'm really good at investing in holds. So it's okay. it works out, right? So yeah. again, we could not agree our... more with your yeah. answer, man. I love it. All right, we've number four, how children. do you balance? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I was going to say, we've even bought our children rentals because I couldn't save for college for them. So yeah, my seven-year-old has better four way and to my three-year-old is getting her first one next week. I love it, man. I love yeah. it. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that. I got one on the way, so I'm going to have to do Oh, that. things That's change. Right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, number four, how did you balance or do you balance risk and reward mm -hmm. when making your investment decisions on the path to becoming a millionaire? So did you or do you, however you want to word that, totally fine. Basic point, though, is how do you typically balance risk and reward? Because as you know, whenever you get rewarded, you've taken some risk and not all yeah. risk plays out with reward. Yeah, the, the interesting thing is, you know, the risk, and this kind of goes back to you, uh, you and I, what we do in holding real estate is the risk. It's not that risky. It's actually a very boring business. And I think that's how I manage risk and reward is the rewards huge. When the risk is boring, you just have to play it out and be consistent. And it's not sexy. It's not exciting. It's really boring. But if you look at any of the ultra, ultra success out there, the people who have gotten the reward, they're really boring. It's not the <laughs> crypto people overnight. It's not the whatever it is. It's really boring, boring basics. Yes. Um, so, and, you know, we, we got caught up in that, you know, the sexy things and things like that. And it's, I'm almost pumping the brakes big time on that and just going ultra, ultra boring. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I concur, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Anytime that I've thought I was going to make it, make it overnight, I lost all my money on those best. I know. Right. Yeah. So it's the, it's the slow play that typically yeah. is what pays, but it's also, as you said, less risky. So again, Absolutely. amazing answer. Awesome. Dustin, yeah. good stuff. Okay. This is it, man. Number five. And obviously we can chat about some other stuff. If you, uh, you know, we have a couple more minutes to spare for your, your, your good buddy, Dave here. Yeah. Uh, but number five is actually my favorite question. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the, the previous four here. Number yeah. five. Looking back, what advice would you give your younger self about not only managing money, but building wealth? So like if Dustin could talk to his 15 year predecessor, right? What yeah. would you tell yourself, dude? That's, that's so funny because I've lost everything too. Uh, well, before I had the success I had, I, I've been in, I've had that entrepreneurial spirit and an entrepreneurial journey. Um, and I would say, a take the action like I did, but take action in boring things. Because when I started earlier, it was, I mean, I bought a bar when I was 23 years old. Don't do that. Whoever's listening, <laughs> do not do that, by the way. Don't, <laughs> right? so don't do that. <laughs> um, right. So I, I had the action part down, just taking action and fall forward, that kind of thing. Um, but I was going after it the wrong way. It needed to be those boring things and time on task over time. That's what's going to get you the success. Agreed, man. I, I agree as well. All great answers dated to today, Dustin. Great answers. Yeah, well. Man, any parting words? I love that we got these, these episodes are kind of shorter. They're bite-sized. They're, they're consumables. The best word. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, so. so, you know, not doing them quick, not quick, but shorter is, is really something I, I love about this particular podcast and this show. Um, what parting words would you give, you know, the audience? Because, you know, pe most people that are going to be listening, uh, not all, of course, but most people are on their way. They haven't reached yeah. a million or 3 million or 5 million or 50 million yet, right? They haven't. They're, they're on their way. They probably work a job. Um, they probably don't like the job. They're mm -hmm. probably trying to figure out what can I do to get ahead, so, you know, last question here today, my, my man, what advice would you give the audience? You know, and maybe it's something to do to do. Maybe it's something to stop doing. What is it? Yeah. So great question. So a couple of things is one, it's a lot closer than you think. It's a lot closer than you think. And two, not much changes when you hit that seven figure mark. 
I remember the day like it was yesterday, right? So again, knowing my numbers. So, you know, calculating your net worth, I did on a monthly basis. And I remember when it hit uh, to this day and, you know, we were in our office and my wife was working at the time too. And I was like, hey, oh my God, we're here. She's like, no, we're not. Like get back to work because nothing changed, right. right? You still had to do it. And I think that's that's one of those things that you realize is you still have to bring in active income, even though your net worth is high. Right. So have both of them grow your net worth, but also make sure that you don't focus so much on that and let your active income go away. Right. Um, And and I would go back to, you know, what we talked about with having a coach and having a a goal or a vision. What do you want? Yeah. Right. We, we have the, the phrase again, I stole from Keller Williams and Gary Keller, but it's life by design. You get to choose this man. What do you want in life? Don't say society or culture, my parents or this or this or this. What do you want? You want, and then right. go out and get it. Hundred percent, Dustin. How this is the final question? I know I said that already. <laughs> I got plenty. <laughs> how of can time. people <laughs> find you if they want to learn more about you? If they want to follow yeah. you? If they want to hire you? Yeah. Where do absolutely. they go? Is it socials? Is it a website? Lay it on me, man. Where do where yeah, do people so, go so, to learn more? Great question. So on Instagram, it's Dustin underscore underscore Hog H O O G. Facebook, it's weird. It's actually Dustin Charles. Um, or yeah, you can go to DustinHope.com and all my contact information is there as well. Amazing. Guys, go check it out. Connect with Dustin. I've Let's known do. Dustin for probably seven or eight years. Great mm-hmm. guy. Super big heart. He's here to help. Dustin, thank you for your time. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for this information, this knowledge, this value. I know the audience is going to love this as well. What's the website? One more time. Just DustinHogue.com. Spell it. D-U-S-T-I-N-H-O-O-G.com. You heard it from the man himself. All right, right, guys. Thanks for listening. Signing off. Thanks. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.